to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline, and I'm here with Coach Valerie. And I'm kind of giggling because the reason why we started this podcast is because Valerie and I We'll get together and we'll start talking about things we see online or articles we read or uh, people we know in our community and groups we've seen running and and all those things. You guys have heard them all. We'll bring all that we bring them into this podcast because we really do geek out about running and geek out about um, conversations like this. And this just happened as we were taping this, we started talking about the next concept that we want to discuss, which is being, how do I stop from being so tired when I go running or tired when I work out? And so we got into this and I realized three minutes into it, we really weren't recording the podcast. So let's get back to that, Valerie. We were talking about the concept of the question that we see a lot is why am I so tired when I'm running? So can you kind of answer that question and take it back to what you were just talking about? Sure. Yes. And <laughs> um, so I was telling uh, Caroline that when I when I first got into running and I was in, you know, of course, coaching a running group, that I was always able to run and talk, which is probably can be annoying as well. But there was like I didn't have the um, any any problem like going for a run, talking you know, and so people would be like, how can you talk while you're running? Like, there's no way I could run and talk. And I was like, huh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not at a cardiovascular fatigued place. And what I, and then, and by the way, when I very, very first started uh, coaching running groups, I was an aerobics teacher, okay. which is now called group fitness. Back then we just called it teaching aerobics. So I taught step and I taught high impact and low impact and you name it, I taught it. So I had so much base, you know, my, my endurance base was huge, right? I'm teaching probably at that time, 15 to 20 hours a week of cardio, if you want to call it that. And I've always done strength training. So what right. I realized is because these girls could stay in my aerobics class for an hour and they didn't have to stop and leave, you know? So I was like, why can they do a full hour of step aerobics? But the sen- as soon as we get outside, they can't run half a mile without needing to stop and walk or they're getting winded. So this has right. for me been for years. And what I realized was, and this is again, the initial realization is, well, they've never really been distance runners before. You know, That's this true. is new to, <laughs> this is new to them. And what was happening is it wasn't so much that their cardio was, was not there. It was, they didn't have the elasticity and the muscular, like the muscular strength and elasticity needed for running. Cause you're holding your, you know, it's amazing when you're, when you do like, say, let's say a step aerobics class who no one does anymore, but let's pretend you're standing still. Basically, you're not really going anywhere. So you're transferring your weight kind of side to side. You maybe have a step, you go up and down. However, you're not really having to travel forward through space. So, and there's a lot of ways to make yourself more efficient in place. Kind of like people that do spinning, right? Peloton's so popular. Right. And most people will say, wow, like I really got my heart rate up, but how did they get their heart rate up? They added tension or they stood up or they had to pedal yeah. quicker, but almost everyone can pedal through a class. Even if you're out of shape, you could turn right. the dial down and you could just, you know, maybe just the wheels would spin. So for a lot of people, they're like, gosh, I can do a, a Peloton class. And then I go out for a run. I can't breathe. And yeah. it's because <laughs> it's honestly, it's because you haven't had training in how to run. So you're really inefficient. So most people are getting tired because they're just moving wrong. Their muscles are getting tired. Their joints are getting tired. Their bones are getting tired. You know, the fatigue is actually from the body having to do too much work and not being able to keep up that effort. And so then you have to say, okay. And then we always, by the way, we're very big on when you're first starting, you need to stop, reset relax a bit, get yourself back and go again. Right. But to know that the reason that you're getting tired, especially if you're a newer runner, you know, is because you haven't yet really built the foundation up to be able to hold yourself in the right place and run correctly, which is fine. It's just something you need to work on and learn and develop. 
And most people, I tell them, you're actually working so much more than you need to, you know, yeah. because if, if I don't really know how to be efficient in my running, then I'm just going to be moving my arms and legs, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how most that's people exactly. run. <laughs> and, and not realizing that maybe you're bending over a little bit. And as soon as you bend over, you're adding 60 to 100 pounds of weight on your back. You know, wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much extra work we're putting on our frame only because we're not efficient. And, and that's important because I don't have anywhere to give my weight away to. If I'm sitting on my Peloton bike, I can sit on, I'm sitting, I can take my hands off the handlebars for a minute. You know, I can unweigh myself a little bit. If I'm, um, you know, doing a, I don't know, a fitness class, I can just kind of step side to side for a minute to catch my breath. Well, I'm running. There's no, you got to run. <laughs> right. So right. there's been, there's been a lot of talk in the, in the um, community lately about trying to get people to run slower. And, and I really don't like using the word slower because to me, yeah. it makes me think of people moving their feet slower, which is not what I want for you. However, right. I do agree that we have too many people, uh, runners, and we see them all the time come into us and they don't really have a base of running. And yet they're like, I signed up for a half marathon. <laughs> right? True. Yeah. And then they're yeah. trying to set this goal of running this longer distance because we think, oh, that'll get me in shape. Right. That'll get me in shape by running those longer miles. Well, the reality is if you haven't set your body up yet to run those longer miles, then your miles are actually breaking you down. And that's why you're tired. And that's why your feet hurt. And that's why those things happen. So as soon as you start to build your base and the base is strength and elasticity, honestly, to be able right. to hold your, I'm not talking about, you know, bodybuilding. I'm talking about body weight, being able to hold your own body weight and being able to use your own muscle elasticity is how you'll reduce the fatigue in your run. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope this uh, helped you guys. And if you uh, like our podcast, we hope you'll share it with a friend. And if you have any questions that you want us to answer, like some of these questions we find out in the, in the world and looking around, but we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at support at runrx.fit. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at R-U-N-R-X. Dot F -I -T. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit. 